Hello everyone, Dr. Mandel here with you. Hopefully you're having a pleasant day or a night. I want to say hello to everyone out there. Uh, we are streaming live via the internet and chat rooms are open as notifications are going out. Uh, today I want to talk about cervical spondylosis. Uh, something very, very important. I really want to explain the details of this. I'm going to kind of move real quick. Uh, this is arthritic changes occurring in the neck. Everyone in the world, if you live long enough, you will get this particular condition. When I say long enough, that's just after like 40 or 50 years of age. Some people have this at 20 years of age. And we'll talk about why. Uh, but uh, this is a serious condition. And what bothers me is when I was going through the internet, uh, I won't mention where, uh, dozens and dozens of people are teaching the wrong exercises. There are certain things you do not want to do for cervical spondylosis, arthritis, degeneration of the discs, spurs. Let's go into it right now. We'll come back to it. I'll show you some specific recommendations, certain things you should do and things you should never do for this or you're looking for potential problems. I can't believe the majority of people who talk about this are teaching the wrong stuff. So let me see if I can clarify this for my listeners and my subscribers. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, here is the old uh, pain in the neck. Uh, we are looking at nerves. I'm gonna, as I move up here, uh, this is something that is very common, not only in elderly people, but young people because of chronic forward head posture. Uh, look at this, <clears throat> chronic forward head posture. Does this look familiar? Taking the old uh, phone and texting. Okay, the iPad, the typing the pillows behind the head, the writing, the reading, the driving. Over and over and over, the forward head posture is destructing people. It's causing kyphosis. It's causing hunchback in the, in the uh, upper back area. It's causing gibbous, which is that swelling, that big swelling you're getting in the upper back, lower neck, rounded shoulders. Uh, if you look at my videos, people out there know, know that I probably am the king on posture because this is the major epidemic you're going to see five years from now, four years from now, over cancer, over heart disease, over diabetes because of technology. Let's go here. If you look at this, here is our head, 12 pounds. Uh, for every inch we go forward, it's an additional 10 pounds. For two inches forward, 32 pounds. Three inches forward, 42 pounds. Imagine, just imagine your head like this for hours. Imagine the weight and what's going on behind the vertebrae, the discs, the nerves. Uh, and you're going to kind of understand more about this. But cervical spondylosis is all about degeneration from poor posture. Let's look here. We're looking at osteophytes. We're looking at thinning of the disc. We're looking at disc degeneration. We're looking at narrowing of the joint space, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this x-ray here. You see this, how thin that disc is compared to the ones above and below. You see how you're getting spurs in there. Now let's make it a little more sense for you. Here is the same picture of the neck. This is the way it is. The curve in your neck should be a C-shaped curve. Most people's neck is straight or reversed, okay? A military neck or a reversal of the neck. Now that being the head being 12 pounds, compressing down on the discs, no more on the back of the joints of called the facet joints, but on the disc, that's why we're getting disc degeneration. That's why we're speeding up this condition. That's why we're developing inflammation, pain, spasm, discomfort, and I'll show you in just a second. But remember something, the discs are in the front of the vertebrae. The nerves come out behind the vertebrae, okay, the bodies of the vertebrae. So uh, I want you to keep something in mind. I'm going to come right back to this. I don't want to jump the gun here. Uh, if you look at this picture here, there's an MRI on the right. You can ignore that, but you can see compression. If you look at the uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, C4, C5, you can see the compression in there uh, on the back of that spinal cord. But look at the left here. Look at the bone spurs. Now, uh, let me come back to this in just a second. Well, let's come back right now. Um, if you notice that the nerves come out in the back uh, and uh, people are stretching, for example, looking upwards, what you're doing is you're compressing these nerves more. 
You don't want to look upwards with cervical spondylosis, okay? Because as you look up, you compress more on the nerve structure, particularly looking up and going back to the side. You're narrowing the IVF space. You see here are the openings where the nerves come out. So if we lean over to that area, what are we doing? We're compressing that side. We're opening up the other side, okay? But we're compressing the side that we're leaning back and over on. Those are, those are positions. In other words, people are teaching stretches, do this, do this. You don't do that with cervical spondylosis. That will inflame the nerve root because you've already got compression. Now, understand that the nerves come out in the back. So if we bring our head forward, look what happens to the back of the vertebrae. It opens up. The pressure is opening. The hole is bigger where the nerves are coming out of. So that means you can do this because you're opening up the nerve root. I'm sorry, the IVS space, which is the hole where the nerve root exits. Okay. Um, I hope you can understand this a little bit. Now, here is a subluxation. So in other words, this is where the energy is coming through. Okay, let's look at this model and look at this model. Um, the vertebrae, let's, I'm trying to put it the same way as this one looks. Let's go this way. The, the nerves are coming out behind the bodies of the vertebrae. So in other words, where you see that arrow going like this, that's the front of the body. Behind where the nerves are coming out of, that's the back part of the body where the nerves come out of. So in other words, as you lean forward, you're opening up that hole where that nerve comes out of. So theoretically, um, I don't want to jump the gun. If you take your head and you bring it forward, that's going to ease a lot of the pain. Uh, when people have, let's say, compression, even on the lower back, it may be um, just spinal stenosis. Leaning forward, it makes it easier. Okay, so generally when we go forward, it makes it easier. Let's just move up uh, so I can continue. Uh, here it shows degeneration, uh, thinning of a disc, compressing on a nerve. Now, why did I bring this up? Because if you look here, it shows that the nerves are going all the way down the arm. So in other words, when we have cervical spondylosis, we're getting tingling, numbness, uh, we're getting degeneration, arthritic changes in there. Most of it's silent until the later phases. It's kind of like a, a, a nail that gets caught in a tire and all of a sudden you're, you're, you never knew it was there until the, the tire is low on air. Well, it's kind of like the, uh, uh, the tip of the iceberg that whatever's been brewing underneath, you had no symptoms until one day something aggravated it. It could be your forward head posture. It could be an accident, auto accident. It could be poor posture, sleeping. It could be anything. But once we start exhibiting problems here, it doesn't mean you're going to have pain here, but you can have tingling or numbness in the hands, weakness in the grip strength, uh, pain burning in the shoulder blade. You may notice in the chest. You may notice it going up under the skull, over the head, behind the eyes. In other words, we can't always base the causation of where the symptoms are, meaning that the symptoms don't necessarily mean it's where it's coming from. So it can be very tricky. It's kind of like, and I have this, it's kind of like a, um, an abscess tooth uh, where the tooth is infected, but you don't feel pain where the tooth is infected. You feel it radiating somewhere else in the mouth. Very, very common. It's called referred pain. So let's move up here um, a little bit higher. So this is what I was explaining about flexion and extension. When you extend back, the back of the vertebrae, the holes or the nerves come out of get narrower. When you go forward, the holes get wider. That's why with people with herniations, it's easier for them to bring their head forward. So when people are teaching, you know, rotate this way, rotate this way, pull it, pull it back, don't do that. That's going to make the problem worse. And I'm trying to explain the anatomy and the physiology behind it so you can understand why. Because if I just tell you without showing you, it's not going to click. So uh, this is a very common condition. Probably the most common problem in the spine and the neck is arthritis, is spondylosis, degenerative joint disease, degenerative disc disease. They're all like in the same category. It's the same thing. So when you hear these different words, don't panic. So let's, let me just mention a couple of things. Uh, number one, anytime we have inflammation, always ice. Ice is always good. Whether, whether in doubt or ever in doubt, always use ice because ice can never hurt you. If you put heat on something that's inflamed, it can get worse because we want to remove irritation inflammation off the disc. Now, um, there are, are lots of great things that I love, like uh, curcumin, uh, turmeric. They have great formulas. Uh, 
I like even stuff like the syrup peptase, like right here, uh, a great natural anti-inflammatory. And it's, it's a, a protease where it actually eats up the dead tissue uh, for people with chronic like disc problems. This is a, a beautiful thing to take. Um, you have quercetin, you have ginger, uh, you have frankincense, you have uh, boswellia, which frankincense together. But boswellia to me is one of the best. So there are natural things you can get on if you are a chronic disc, arthritic, uh, pinched nerve type of condition that you may be suffering from that you've been to doctors, had epidurals, been on steroids, been on painkillers, been there, done that, and it's been told you need surgery, start doing things smart. You need to be proactive. That's why these programs are so effective because this is really what you need to understand. Okay, let's go into the trap stretch. Trap stretch real quick. If you just cross your, your legs like that and you as you cross and as you lean upwards, you'll stretch all these muscles. A great, great stretch. Uh, one of the best things we can do with uh, spondylosis is the chin tuck. And I'm a big, big teacher of the chin tuck. Uh, not only do you have to do it sitting up, it, or you can do it many ways, but generally what you're doing here is you're just tucking the chin in. You're not bringing it up or down, and you're just going for, uh, forward to backwards. Just like this. If I go from the side. And generally what you're doing is you're just tucking it back a couple of seconds and going back, going back forward because you're trying to strengthen the anterior flexor muscles. Those are the muscles that are weak when you have forward head posture. Most people uh, in the world have forward head posture. Why? That's the way life is. We don't read like astronauts above us. We don't drive up here. Okay. People don't text like this. Everything we do is down below us, unfortunately. That's a big problem. We don't write on a chalkboard, okay? Everything we're doing is in this position. So that means that you need to start jutting the chin down, tucking the chin down like this when you're looking down. The less you bring your ears forward from the center of your body, which is your shoulders, the less problems you're going to have. Who's got the biggest problems with this? Hairdressers, manicurists. Because you spend hours like this, so that means you need to start changing up that position. You need to give the muscles a break because you're not resting. You're overutilizing muscles. Muscles are fatiguing, and they're going to spasm. And those muscles attach behind the skull. And when they get contract, they're going to pull back here, and it's going to lead to headaches. It's going to lead to pressure up in here. It's going to lead to dizziness. It's going to lead to tinnitus. It's going to lead to vertigo. It can lead to all those crazy symptoms from forward head posture, even TMJ. Uh, so... You can actually do chin tucks lying down. When you're prone like that, just jut it back and go back forward again. Jut it back. Okay, this is good because you're going against gravity. You can actually do it supine. So if you're lying on your pillow, you can just uh, jut it down against your pillow or, or on or whatever you're laying on, a mat or the floor. Okay, so generally you're just jutting back. Okay, you can jut it back against the ball or put something behind on a wall or you can build something on a wall you can just walk up to it and just jut back now not only do you have to jut on that you can actually jut your neck on a towel okay don't do this you want to do this get that double chin okay if you're not getting the double chin you're not jutting right so uh it's very important that there's a difference between between the insertion and the origin. In other words, we don't want to take the neck and we don't want to bring it backwards. We don't want to bring it to the side and go backwards on either direction. Going forwards to both directions are usually very, very safe. But what you got, could also do, you can go ahead and grab, for example, I'm sitting on this chair here. I'm grabbing under the chair, right? And it's pulling my shoulder down. And then I could just lean over like this. I'm trying to stay in the can in the picture here. Okay, I'm just leaning over. So in other words, instead of me working from my neck, I'm working from my muscles that are attaching to my neck. You see, you get that what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you? That's very important because you're not putting the neck through that full mobility, which potentially can inflame on those nerves. Because realize when you look back at this and you look to see that degeneration, that thinning in there, uh, people don't know where the degeneration is. They look at an x-ray, and they don't even understand the x-ray. You should look at my videos. I taught you about cervical x-rays, how to read it, 
and I taught you about lumbar x-rays. I have a really good video on that. I just recently did not too long ago. But um, we don't really know, <coughs> excuse me, where the, the, the uh, spurs are or the compression is. So all I'm telling you is that be aware that, you know, the correct strengthening exercises are important. And when I say by that, what about like isometric exercises? Isometric exercises are strengthening muscles without putting it through full range of motion. Let's watch. Okay. Contract. Five seconds. Relax. Okay. Now, we can come over a little bit and then contract. Okay. You can do the same thing forward. You can come down forward. You can actually put it behind you. Push back. Five seconds. Relax. Okay. You can come to the right. Now, why do I say that? Because when you do this type of contraction called PNF, or proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, or neuromuscular re-education, you're re-educating these muscles, you're strengthening the muscles, you're increasing impulses from the muscle into the brain, the brain's then sending messages back to the muscle to say, okay, guess what, guys? We are going to stay strong because by, by contracting a muscle... You don't have to put it all the way through the range of motion. As long as you're contracting it and using it, it's going to stay strong. That's important because muscles are designed to stay strong. So in summary, what we learned here today is that cervical spondylosis, number one, comes from poor posture, meaning forward head posture, rounded shoulders, accumulation. Um, I cannot tell you not the hundreds, but the thousands of children on these games. You know these games better than I do. <coughs> Excuse me. And they're like this for days. And you may have children doing it. Okay. Or they're texting on their phone, their iPad for days. Just be aware that this will lead to permanent problems. If you look at children today, they're walking around like this. Look where their ears are at. Now, forget about the adults. They're wasted. They're like drug addicts to me because they're so beyond this, they just don't care. Okay? But they will care when they start having these symptoms. So, all in all, this really tells us why wait till something explodes? Why wait till the tire blows? Why wait till the engine uh, is actually smoking because there's no oil in there? This is our responsibility for ourselves as well as us teaching our children and our friends and people through our social media that poor posture is number one. I promise you, there's one thing that I am certain that this is a major epidemic and it's getting worse because of technology. Technology is not making us healthier, it's making us sicker, unfortunately. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I apologize for the time, but there's really no other way to shortcut this. Because if I shortcut this, I'm really shortcutting your own health. Uh, if you are new to this uh, channel or you're new to this, watching this video, uh, I ask you to subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. I would appreciate whatever thumbs ups you will give me here as well. So check me out on Facebook, Motivational Doc on Facebook. Uh, leave me any kind of positive comments if you have them or any questions, whatever you like to do. But again, leave your questions below. I promise you, you'll get thousands of people that will be reading this. They will be answering questions. They will be interconnecting with you. Uh, this is a major epidemic. There are millions and millions and millions of people who have this condition. It's crazy, but it's reality. I wish all of you Great health for you and your family. A lot of love and many blessings. And uh, we'll catch up with you real soon. Bye-bye now.